I'm here as a Christian, first of all, a uh, saint of God's, and I've been told that we are going to be voting on alcohol being brought to Barberville February 7th. I'm from Detroit, Michigan originally, um, actually 45 minutes north, the suburb of Detroit. Seeing every day the devastation that alcohol drugs brings. You can check the Detroit newspaper. I would challenge any of you if you want to see what it's going to bring to this city. You think of revenue, money, um, it'll bring that, but that will go toward extra jail costs, police enforcement, ambulance, hospital stays. Um, you're not going to see the money go to things that you think it will go to. Um, the money will go toward the business owners. The business owners will definitely profit but they'll profit at the expense of our children. As a 59-year-old preacher, uh, it troubles me that, you know, we're having so much trouble in our society today with meth labs and drugs as it is, and yet we're trying to pile upon uh, this city and the people of this city, good people, that... Uh, uh, we're going to have more problems on top of more problems. I, I was concerned. I said, well, what does this in fact, or what do we, if we vote yes, what does this mean legally for the city of Barberville? And, uh, you know, I've been getting some different answers to that question. So I thought maybe I'd share a few things that I've learned today because I was able to spend some time with the general counsel, uh, the alcohol beverage and control office in Frankfurt, and I was surprised to learn that Barberville being a fourth class city uh, and having chosen in this petition, the petitioners, to uh, word it as they have, uh, it, it really will change Barberville. You know? So I'm coming to our city council and I'm saying, <coughs> I'm asking for the facts to be put out in front of the people of Barberville and let them make their own choice. But uh, this concerns me that we have a lot of people, and, and I heard our judge executive in open session, and he said he really didn't know what this meant. And I think there's a lot of other people in this town that don't really know what this means. And, I, and so I would just challenge you as the city council, uh, if you want to call the general counsel's office, and don't take my word for it. I'm not the authority <coughs> on this legal aspect. I was actually told that one of the Supreme Court judges, judge, former Judge Justice of the Supreme Court, Leibson, said he couldn't even untangle the tangled <coughs> web of the alcohol laws in the state of Kentucky. Now this is not asking the public to vote on erecting a new uh, community hall. This is not the people voting to build a new park or change a street name. This is the community voting on allowing what would have been an illegal substance <coughs> to be sold openly in our community. It just seems to me that we're allowing too many things to chance as a society. And I don't, as a, as a father-to-be, I do not want my son or daughter to walk down our street, to come to our festivals, and to see alcohol so blatantly disregarded as such a vile substance. And all we're asking is, can the public be informed of all the true facts in this matter and not just say it's a wet dry vote. Thank you. I would ask that we have somebody for the ABC, which are totally nonpartisan, they don't have a dog in this fight, have their legal person come down here as a service to the community to do a community information and let that person interpret the law and say this is what it means, this is what will be allowed, these are the numbers and not all this misinformation and personal agendas that are being manipulated mm -hmm. to try to sway this thing. Let's get the facts. And, and they said they would come. They would not come if a bunch of preachers asked them. They won't come if the liquor barons ask them. But they will come if the city council asks them. There's got to be some way that we can get this message out to the public that it's not like Corbin. It's worse than Corbett by a long shot. And you know, when you let bars come in, the next thing you know, it's strip tease and, mm -hmm. and they're always they're already trying to legalize gambling. <coughs> Where, where's it going to stop? Let's stop it here, but somewhere or other, we have got to get it out to the public.
that this is not right. It's not good. Like Brother Sylvester and, and some of the others, uh, I don't know what the people that have asked me. They don't know. They have no idea. All they know is the way <coughs> of them. And I would plead with the council also to make that clear to the city leaders uh, that they know exactly what they're voting for. Middlesboro or Barbell. And Middlesboro was wet and Barbell was dry. So that's why I'm a resident of Barbell. <laughs> and I, I don't really, the only thing I can say is that if we have to resort to whiskey, liquor, and gambling to exist, it's there's something wrong. There's just something wrong. The, I guess the way to put it is, this is done by the, the registered voters of the city, started out that way, it goes to the physical court, they put it on the ballot, and then it comes to us. If it, if it does not pass, then I'm not sure, I think it's three years, the clerk told me, before it could even be come, come back. If it does pass, then it comes to the council. In the event it passes, I've heard several misconceptions concerned, like to the PowerPoint. You know, that will be the council's responsibility to resolve all these issues, and it's a whole lot more than you all have spoken about. Um, from the signage to the single sales to the Sunday sales, I've sat down and spoken with the council members from time to time during, since this first started a month and a half ago, and it was unanimous. Two aren't here, so I can't speak for those two. But we've done a lot of things in the city in the six years I've been in, from our parks to our community events, from Easter egg hunts for the children to the campgrounds to the football to the soccer. All of the things we've done in the city, the quilters, thing, things, the tourism house, all the events we've done, we're not going to let the alcohol tear it down. It might would be a possibility to do that, though, to have a like a town hall meeting. That's what we're asking. That's what we need. And, and just let just let let somebody come in and kind of run over run over. Because I don't think the college would never. You know, there won't be any drinking on Union College's campus. There isn't allowed now, and whether they do or not has no. But and there wouldn't be after that. Union College campus would not be. They won't be allowed beer on the campus. So, is it yes or no? Oh yeah, yeah, that's no problem. So you're gonna you're gonna invite me to come. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.